Okay, you probably already know how to navigate your system. So start thinking of the commands that you would use to navigate, say, your hard drive using the old command.exe shell. Or if you prefer, think of the commands you would use to navigate a hard drive using a Unix shell. And let's see what you come up with. Here's a command quiz. What command would you use to change directories from the command line? You'd probably use CD. What about getting a list of files and folders? Well, you'd use dir, unless you're from a Unix world, in which case you might use ls instead. How would you delete a file? You'd probably use del. What about copying a file? A longtime Windows user might use copy, but a Unix person might use cp. What about displaying the contents of a text file? Again, the Windows person might answer type, while a Unix person might be familiar with cat. And the good news is that all of these commands also work in PowerShell, although there are some slight differences from the old commands you're used to. Let's take a look. So you probably got all the right answers. You already know how to navigate what's called a hierarchical storage system using a command line interface. Now, although the commands in Windows PowerShell are a little different under the hood, they're pretty much the same as they were for a Unix shell or the command.exe shell. You'll just need to learn a few new commands to do a few different things. Let's take a look. We'll start with something simple. And trust me, this is going to look familiar to you. For example, cd backslash changes to the root of the current drive. dir gets a list of files and folders from the current folder. cd program files changes... Oh, wait, there's an error. See, PowerShell uses the space character as a delimiter between commands and parameters. So it's seeing C program as a parameter and then files as a second parameter, and it doesn't know what to do. If I wrap that in double quotation marks, PowerShell will see it as a single parameter and change to that directory for me. Another dir gets a list of files and folders from that directory. CD dot dot changes. Oh, wait, another error. Again, PowerShell needs a space character between command names and their parameters. So cd space dot dot works just fine to go up one folder level, and I'll run dir again just to confirm it. All right, so if you try running dir slash s in command.exe, that would give you a directory, and it would include subdirectories. However, in Windows PowerShell, it gives you an error. And that's because the command name dir is similar or the same as the one you're used to in command.exe. But the way in which it works and the parameters that it uses are different. So you're going to have to learn to do things slightly differently. And one way to do that is to just ask for help. See, Windows PowerShell includes a powerful built-in help system. And it gives you help on any command just by using the help keyword. Type help, the name of the command, and you get help. It even accepts wildcards so that you can look up commands where you don't know their full name. And the complete syntax is, is covered. It's there. It's all included for you. Let's take a look at how that works. PowerShell tries to make it easy to find help. For example, run help with any command, such as dir, to get a quick reference to that command. If you're looking for examples on how to use the command, run help again with the dash example parameter. Or, to see everything PowerShell knows about a particular topic, run help with the dash full parameter and you'll get pages and pages of information. The help command also accepts wildcards. Run help star c star to see all of the help topics that have the letter c in them. You'll notice that many about help topics also exist, which explain important concepts and functionality other than PowerShell commands. All right, here's something that's always bugged me. You already know one set of commands that are used to navigate a hierarchical storage system. That's a disk drive. Why can't you use that same set of commands for, for other storage systems, uh, like the Windows Registry? That's hierarchical. The Certificate Store? That's hierarchical. Um, Active Directory? Just almost anything, really. Why can't you take that one set of skills you already know and leverage it to manage any kind of storage that Windows is using? You already know how to change folders using the cd command. Why can't you just run cdhkcu colon to change into the hkey current users registry hive? Once you're there, of course, it would make sense to run dir to get a listing of the files and oh, excuse me, a listing of registry keys and values. Changing into the software key should just require cd software, right? And what about environment variables? 
why can't you just run cd env colon to change into the environment variables drive and then run dir to get a listing of environment variables? Of course, cd c colon should take you right back to your c drive. Windows PowerShell uses a system of PS drive providers, and that connects PowerShell to different types of storage. Those providers adapt the storage system so that it looks like a disk drive. That provides the translation, so you can use commands like CD and DIR and everything else to navigate more than just hard drives. I'll show you what these PS drives look like. You can see a list of all the PS drives that PowerShell has currently mapped by running get PS drive. You can also create new drives pretty easily. For example, I'll run new PS drive to create a new drive. I'll name it Z, although you're not limited to single letters for drive names. And I'll let PowerShell know that this is a file system drive, as opposed to a registry drive or some other type. This drive's root path will be C program files, although you can also use a UNC path to connect to a network location. After I run that, I can run cdz colon to change to my new drive, and if I run dir, I'll see the files and folders that are there. Changing back to my C drive with cdc colon, I'll remove the new drive using remove ps drive and providing the drive name z. Notice that when you actually use a drive, such as when you're changing to it, you add a colon to the drive's name. When you're referring to a ps drive using one of the ps drive commands, you do not add the colon. Most of the navigation commands accept wildcards in their file paths. That's a question mark or a star, and you're probably already used to using those. But the problem is that some stores, like the registry, allow those characters in file names. Think about that for just a second. The reason we can use question mark and star as wildcards at the file system is because file names aren't allowed to contain those characters. So the operating system can always tell a wildcard because it's a character that can never exist in a file name. That's not the case in some other types of storage, though. And so most of these commands also have a literal path switch. When you're using the literal path switch, it doesn't try to translate wildcards. It just treats them as literal characters. That way you can access things like registry keys, which might have a question mark in their name, and not have that question mark be treated as a wildcard. Here's what it looks like. I'm going to change into the Windows folder using CD Windows to demonstrate the dash literal path parameter. First, let's get a directory listing for star.dll. Well, plenty of files are shown. Nobody ever said Windows didn't have a few DLLs in there. But now let's run dir-literalpath star.dll. This time I get no files. That's because it's looking for a file named star.dll, and there aren't any. In other words, the literal path parameter has kept the star from being read as a wildcard in the path. Please pause this video now and follow the instructions in your lab guide to complete this lab. There are hints in the lab guide if you need them. And try to complete the lab without referring to the solution in your lab guide. When you're done, resume this video and I'll review a sample solution with you. Here are some sample solutions for lab 2-1. For task 1, I ran dir c program files and noticed that I needed to include the path in quotation marks since the path contains a space. I added the dash recurse parameter to recurse subdirectories. This is obviously going to take some time to run. If you don't want to wait, just press Control C to interrupt the command. Control C is PowerShell's universal break character and will interrupt most commands. Okay, for task two, I'm doing almost the same thing. dir hkcu colon backslash software space dash recurse. This is just demonstrating that the dir command will work with any PS drive, not just the file system. So you can use the same technique globally throughout the shell. And again, Control c comes to the rescue when you get tired of watching this scroll by. Also notice that you may not see some red error text scroll by. This is often due to registry keys that you don't have permission to read or some other similar condition. There are a few ways to accomplish task 3. Probably the easiest, based on what you've learned so far, is to just use the type command to type the system root item from the env drive. Hopefully, you thought to use type, which also works in the older command.exe shell. Another way, though, is to use a special built-in variable called $env, followed by a colon, and then the name of the environment variable you want. 
I hadn't showed you that, but if you think it's easier, then just remember it that way. For task four, I'm assuming that you had a, an, an Intel registry key within your HKCU software registry key. I'll change the software key first and then use the CP command. You could use copy if you prefer, since they do the same thing, and tell it to copy Intel to Sapien class. Getting a directory, you'll see that the new key was created. If you explore it a bit, you also notice that only the key was copied, not its contents. The copy command does support a dash recurse parameter, and I bet with a bit of experimentation, you could figure out how to make it copy the contents of the registry key too. Finally, for task five, I change to that software key and use RD, or remove directory, to remove the Sapien class key I just created. A quick dir confirms that it's been removed.